all of you probably have educators in your family um, or know someone who's working to get back to school right now. And nobody is more excited to see kids than the teachers. And in the spring, I was, you know, something that we've never had to do before. So it's, we're going to give it a try. So we're excited to do it. And that's Thank all. You. I think it's a very positive story. Thank you very much, elementary principals. I think, and you heard uh, George say last week, and uh, uh, the four of them all alluded to, that one of the gr uh, positives of all of this is uh, it has forced us to rethink some, uh, our, some of our ways of educating, and some, a lot of amazing positives have come out of it and uh, realization of we can do more than we probably realized, and the kids can do more than they posit, um, couldn't possibly realize. So at this point, I'll turn it over to the Rotary Club for any questions for any of the four um, of them. If you have a specific question for one of the principals, if you just uh, call them by name so they know which one the specific question's uh, geared towards. I'll start us out here. Uh, Janice, is this going to include students that are totally remote also? Um, okay, so at the elementary level, the students that are 100% remote, all of our specialist teachers at the elementary across all four buildings, they will be posting a specials lesson that the students access whenever they can fit it into their online teaching. So what my teacher is going to be doing live streaming is for the kids that are in the building four days a week. Um, but we have over 400 elementary students whose parents have chosen 100% remote. And the way they will access their special schedules is by going into like a Google Classroom and seeing a, a PE lesson or an art lesson, a library or music lesson. Those will be pre-recorded and posted. Okay. This can either go to you or anybody, any of the teachers. Is there a, is there a one on one connection with the remote students and teachers at any point in time during their their year? Or is it all just accessing a program? Face to face or one to one online? One to one online. Okay. Well maybe Mr. Poole can address that. I don't know. How we talk about schedules, Todd? <laughs> okay, I guess I'm addressing it. Thanks, Janice. Uh, <laughs> will there be any one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, just meeting with my well, three of my remote teachers today. I mean, assessments are going to have to be done one-on-one. -on -one. There are there are 45-minute blocks in a schedule as far as when students have to log on. So, for example. They start their day at 8.30. Everybody, doesn't matter, K through five, they log in, they meet with their teacher, uh, could be 25, 26, uh, I think there's 20 students, you know, varies there. And the teacher may give a short lesson, maybe 10, 15 minutes long, um, and maybe an activity where the students are active, so maybe they go longer, but let's say they do a short, mini lesson, 15 minutes long, then they may say, all right, this is what I want you to do on Seesaw, or this is how you can record it, or this is what I want you to do at home with, um, you know, pencil and paper, maybe work out these math problems that I have to have. And then the teacher would stay in the classroom, but they could turn off their camera or whatever or mic. And then if a student needs help, they just come back to the classroom. So that might allow for one-on-one. -on -one. There might be situations where the teacher's like, I saw what happened yesterday, so, you know, can Todd stay with me afterwards while everybody else goes and works independently? So they're able to come back to the classroom. If not, they continue to do their, their work. And then at, so 45 minutes later at 9.15, they all get back on and then they get further instructions. So it'll be a variety of small group, could be one-on-one, -on -one. it'll be a whole group. Um, I have a question for Abby Bolton. Go ahead. Abby, um, for preschoolers that have not attended Davie before, but are next year will be going into kindergarten, 
what's the best time for them or how are they going to do the assessment uh, at what's, what period of time before the following fall when they would be going into kindergarten? How will the, how will the parents know when they're when to do this? Uh, when are, are you speaking of when we would need to assess them coming into kindergarten? Correct. Okay. Well, uh, this kind of goes for for all of our kiddos. We are lucky enough to have preschool in Kent, so a lot of our children that are coming from the preschool at Davy into the other four ele other three elementaries besides Davy we have a lot of information from our teachers because we have an excellent program. So they already have those assessments available. But all of our children go through something um, called the kindergarten readiness assessment or the kindergarten assessments. Um, what we do is we communicate. In, in years past, we have been able to communicate with parents in the spring as well as over the summer about assessment times for their children and orientation. And that gives parents an opportunity to understand what a typical day would look like, um, what their child, what those expectations are, some of the things that they need to have before they come to school. Um, so we try to prepare parents for that. This year has been a little bit different. So we are now scheduling an hour with each family and 30 minutes um, would be a child working one-on-one -on -one with the teacher for assessments but the other portion would be more of an orientation where parents can learn more about Google Classrooms, they can learn about the daily kindergarten um, expectations, and then also um, can make sure that they meet the teacher and feel comfortable with the process. So this year we had to combine an orientation and an assessment time so it's more individualized. Because um, in the past we've done orientation but it's been a, a, we fill the library full of parents and talk to all the parents at the same time. Obviously we're not allowed to do that this year. So. Um, but I would say any parent that is leaving preschool, whether it's here in Kent City Schools or in the community, um, you know, we, we try to get as, as many words out there as possible in terms of how to register and then individual buildings contact those families on how to do the assessments. Well, this would be a preschooler that was not in the Kent City School System, okay. but will be attending kindergarten at Davies. Oh, attending kindergarten at this year? Next year, at Next year. she couldn't okay. get into the preschool. This year. Yes, we, um, our, year. Pre our preschool is full this year due to COVID, um, but it would be similar. Okay. So the parent at any point can contact the school even this year. Um, in the past, we have done um, where parents have come in and toured the building. We won't be able to do that while students are in the building, um, but if they just contact the building that they know that their child's going to, then we can certainly work, out, work that out and kind of talk through the process. Okay, so the process would be to contact the school. Yes, um, um, or once things start coming out in the spring, you can register for kindergarten and then we'll, we'll be in contact with all those assessment details. Okay, thank you. No problem. Any other questions? I have a, I have a question. This is Lane Kennedy. How, how, what is the percent of our students that are 100% remote? Um, this is this is Abby. I, I can't speak from a district standpoint, but I would say um, from Davy particular, we have about a third of our students that are 100% remote. It's pretty close. Pretty close. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Lang, gen generally speaking, um, and I, it's been a day or two since I've looked at the most recent, but uh, it's been in the high 38% for the elementary and middle school. Um, um, we were a, a little surprised at the high school level. Um, we have approximately 80% uh, of the students at the high school are planning on coming for face-to-face -face blended. Um, so overall for the district though, it holds true with what Abby said. It's about 30% uh, doing 100% remote. Thank you. Anybody else have a question? Well, as you all may be aware, we